OK, so we're unmuted now. Hooray! There we go, hopefully. That's always the trouble when you move things around. Yeah, there's going to expect a few glitches. It's fair to say, expect a few glitches. And, oh, and, there we are, we're up and see and, now. And also, Sandra, my wife, is running the system for the first time today. She's amazing. So I, I may not get any lunch. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, right. Brilliant. Well, we'll start with the prayer and then we'll start with our first uh, song, our songs of praise. As I say, we're really excited about welcoming Ronnie into the family of the church today. Yes. It's great to see family and friends here. Uh, it's good to see uh, everyone here, uh, Marie and Joe, Charlie and Amelia, and uh, it's going to be great. So looking forward. Yeah. Sorry? And the star of the show, Ronnie. So, and the star of the show, Ronnie, exactly. who's being incredibly quiet at the he moment. He is being amazing. <laughs> But there's plenty of time for that. Yeah, exactly. So let's pray, shall we? Father God, thank you that you are here with us now. And as we, we welcome today, Ronnie, into the family of the church, Lord, we can welcome you, even though you're present here already. We welcome you in this place, knowing that you're the living God, knowing that this place is now filled with your glorious presence. So we ask in everything we do today that you will be glorified and people would sense your presence with us now. So we're going to stand and we're going to sing our first song. We encourage people when we're singing at the moment, if you've got a, a face covering, just to, uh, please cover yourself. If you've not got one, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's fine. But I would just, if you have one, just as we're singing, as it's the place where we usually do the most, how can I put it, spray. <laughs> uh, so we're going to stand now and we're going to sing together. Yeah. 
sing a song that we sang on the holiday club um, so I hope you really enjoy this I think actually this is a good one to start with uh, some clapping mm-hmm. when I was lost in a broken heart
Please be seated. Please be seated. We uh, decided to spare you the actions of that one uh, because they're rather, I'm sorry, they're rather frenetic. So, but we had a great time seeing that on the holiday club. So, um, one of the things we want to do next is uh, so we come before God and we confess because we know that we've all done things this week we're not proud of, uh, that we're not right before God. So each week we, we confess before God and say sorry for the things that we have done. So let's join together with the words on the screen. Um, I say the words in white if you want to join in with the words in yellow. Almighty God, our Father, we come to you with sad hearts to tell you that we have done wrong things and to ask for your forgiveness for wanting to live our lives our own way. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. For not doing as we are told. Lord, we are sorry. Forgive us. For not sharing our things. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. For not telling the truth. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. For being jealous or cruel. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. Father, we have often done wrong and we ask you to forgive us. Help us to live our lives in such a way that others may see your glory in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We're forgiven people. As you may have noticed some of the wording in that. We are, over the summer months, we kind of been having, or the summer month or so, we've been having our, everyone in together because often on a Sunday morning, some of the, the children will go out at a certain point, but we've been sharing a lot of things together and uh, you'll, you'll experience some of that. We've got a fantastic video series that we've been using for the whole summer, which has been particularly good. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to hand over to Abby, who's going to be leading our baptism. Abby. So I'd like to invite Ronnie to come up. Could you bring, Ronnie, your mum and dad and your godparents? And maybe your brother and sister could come too if they want to, but they don't have to if they don't want to. Oh, Amelia looking beautiful today. Charlie's looking very dapper too. Yeah, just to get just to be clear. Can't leave you out, Charlie. Brilliant. So this is a really, really exciting day. We're going to welcome Ronnie into God's family. Um, and not just God's family all over the world, but God's family right here in Finham at St. Martin's. Just like happened with Charlie, and just like happened with Amelia, who I think was the first baptism I was here for, so that's very exciting. I feel like we've, we're coming kind of a circle. Um, so first of all, though, I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to give an introduction, and I'm going to say a prayer, which basically tells us what baptism is all about, explains why it's important, why it's exciting, what we're doing this morning. So I'm just going to say these words. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the spirit. That's right, we do. <laughs> yes. And has given us baptism as the sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are clothed with Christ, dying to sin that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity and God calls us to fullness of life. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give to your faithful people new life in the water of baptism. Guide and strengthen us by the same Spirit that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Now, I'm going to suggest, Joe, do you want to just kind of come in a bit? Because I'm just aware that anybody watching online won't be able to see Ronnie. <laughs> which would be a disaster, Ronnie. It would. Okay. Now, this next bit is for all of us, actually. There's some words, and I want to hear it really good and loud. We're going to say we're going to support Ronnie, and we're going to welcome him and uphold him in the faith into which he's being baptised. So there's some words in yellow in a minute. Do say them out nice and loud. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome this child and uphold them in their new life in Christ? With the help of God, we will. Do you hear that, Ronnie? They've got your back. It's all going to be okay. So, parents and godparents. The church receives Ronnie with joy. And today we're trusting God for his growth in faith. Will you pray for him? Will you draw him by your example into the community of faith and walk with him in the way of Christ? Wonderful. In baptism, Ronnie begins his journey of faith. You speak for him today. Will you care for him and help him to take his place within the life and worship of Christ's church? So in baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. So therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ the way, the truth and the life? So, Ronnie. Christ claims you for his own. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to put a cross on your head. It's a good thing, I promise. Okay. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Let's say all of these words together. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil. And remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Oh, so may God Almighty deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore you in the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go down to the font now. This is the bit where you get wet. It may be the bit where I get wet too, but we'll soon find out. Shall we go down? If you, family and friends, or anyone want to turn around, if you can't see, you, we'll be on the screen as well, so if it's easy to do it that way. But we're going to go down to the font now. I'm going to encourage you just to, we can recreate the moment after the service if you want to. Just use your own eyes. Don't worry about the phone. This is all recorded on live stream, so you'll, have, you'll be able to grab shots from that too. Um, let's just stay present in this moment if we can. Can all the children see, most importantly? If you need to come down here, come down here. That's absolutely fine. Okay. So this is exciting, Ronnie. This is the same font where Charlie was baptised and where Amelia was baptised. 
and where lots and lots of people in this church were baptized too. Oh, and Joe. Okay, right, we're just getting this information out, new information. This is a, this is a, a font that's been here for, not, for nearly 90 years. Imagine all, all the people in God's story who've started their journey here. And this is where Ronnie's going to start his journey as part of that same family. Okay? So there are words on the screen if you want to join in. So I'm going to say a prayer over the water. But first we're going to say, I'm going to say, Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your gift of water in creation. For your spirit sweeping over the waters, bringing in light and life. For your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, baptized in the river Jordan. We bless you for your new creation, brought to birth by water and the Spirit, and for your grace bestowed upon us, your children, washing away our sins. May your holy and life-giving Spirit move upon these waters, restore through them the beauty of your creation, and bring those who are baptized to new birth in the family of your church. Drown sin in the waters of judgment. Anoint your children with power from on high and make them one with Christ in the freedom of your kingdom. For all might, majesty, dominion and power are yours now and forever. Alleluia. Amen. Yes, amen, indeed. So, as I say, Ronnie is joining a family, a worldwide family of God, as well as the family here in this church. And so we all need to respond to these next questions. And the answer for at least three of them is, I believe and trust in him, if you can't quite see the screen. So, brothers and sisters, I ask you to join with me and the parents and godparents in professing together the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we see how this goes? Can we have a good water? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hiya. There we go. I'm going to get your arms up to the flats. There we are. Ronnie Martin, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well done. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. You did so well, I think. Should have a little look. Oh, look at all these people. Look at all these people. That's where, that's where you just had your water from there, didn't you? So 
So this is all your family now, even the ones you're not too sure about. <laughs> this is all your family. So we're going to welcome you now. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let's say these words together. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly father. We welcome you. Shall we give them a clap? Wow. I'm going to give you back to your mum before you decide. It's all. <laughs> we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So do share a sign of peace from where you are as we make our way back to our seats. Okay. Fantastic. Ronnie was brilliant, wasn't he? Really brilliant. You didn't have to worry, did you? <laughs> brilliant. Thank you, Abby. That was beautifully done. Isn't it wonderful to do that together as a community of faith? Really wonderful. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to play to you uh, one of the, the videos I've been talking about, which we've been thinking of how we've looked at the Bible over this summer period and we're going to play to you one of these incredible videos so sandra hopefully we can get it stories of the bible the parable of the great banquet this is jesus hey who is the son of god and the savior of the world while jesus was on earth he taught everyone about god's love and healed people from their sickness he did many miracles, like walking on water. Oh, hey guys. And even raised people from the dead. Uh, Wahoo! One day, Jesus went to eat at the house of a Pharisee. He said to the Pharisee, who was hosting the meal, When you give a dinner, do not invite your friends, your family, or your rich neighbors, for they will invite you back, and that will be your only reward but invite the poor and those who have trouble seeing and walking. Then God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. When a man at the table heard what Jesus said, Ahem. he said to Jesus, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with a story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. Ah! But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. What? No way. His master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor. And those who have trouble seeing and walking. After the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. Great, all right. So his master said, 
Go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. Stories of the Bible. So, it's a parable. We're thinking about, um, all through this summer, we're thinking about parables, which is stories that Jesus told to help us understand things better. Um, and so this is the parable of the great banquet. Now, I don't know what you're going to have after this service, but I'm guessing those of you involved with friends and family of, of Ronnie are off to have a celebration of some sort. And I believe that this is also a date, another special date of celebration for Marie and Joe, and it's their wedding anniversary. So this has been a very big celebratory kind of day in the Clues family, in, historically. But I wonder, we've not been able to do much celebrating, have we, in the last 18 months or so, have we? It's one of the things that we've missed out, being able to celebrate with other people. Wonder what? What's your favourite kind, favourite way of celebrating? Anybody got any ideas they'd like to share? How do you like to celebrate with other people? Eating food. Eating food. Yep. Number one. Music, Music and dancing. Absolutely. I'm built for singing, not for dancing, but I like a dance. I like a dance. Anything else? Getting the family all together, getting friends together, maybe going out perhaps. For some, for some people it might be like an elegant dinner party. For others, in my house, off, certainly with my kids, it would be a sleepover or a no sleep over, more likely. There's loads of ways to celebrate something, aren't there? There's loads of ways. And when I was little, I used to really love, when I was probably about Charlie and Amelia's age, I used to love getting all the preparations for birthday parties, writing the invitations and planning what we were going to eat. And the planning, and maybe I'm a bit weird, but the planning and the choosing were as much part of the fun for me as the actual party itself. I think I was sort of anticipating, you know, imagining what the, the fun was going to be like. It was as much fun as the, as the event itself. It's like I was enjoying it before it even happened. And in Jesus' story today, did you notice that the, the host is excited about preparing the feast, preparing his party for all the people to come to? He's excited to welcome his guests who he's invited. He's, he's made all the preparations. He's got the food ready, like the best food, the nicest drinks. I expect he's put on his best clothes. Maybe he's been planning the music he's going to play. Maybe he's been practicing his dancing. He's looking forward to the guests coming to join the feast to celebrate the joy that there is in his home. Now, the tradition in that culture, way back, was that a host would warn his invited guests that he was going to invite them to come to a party. And then once it was ready, he would send out his servants to go and let everybody know that it was time to come. So this invitation wasn't a surprise. They would have known that they were invited. They would have known that there was a joyful event waiting for them. And of course, parables, stories that Jesus told, we've been thinking all summer about them. They're always there to make a point. Jesus is always explaining something with a story. So he isn't just talking about a random party. He's showing what life in God's kingdom might look like. He's telling them that we should, telling the people listening to him, telling us that we shouldn't be surprised to be invited into God's kingdom. And God's kingdom is a place of celebration, of joy, of freedom. I don't know what preconceptions people have about being a Christian, but. I think sometimes we, we don't do ourselves very much justice, do we? We sometimes come over a bit doer and a bit serious. But actually, God's kingdom is about joy and about freedom. It's a celebration. Our 
party in God's kingdom was never meant to happen without us. It's not a surprise that we're invited. It's why Ronnie's baptism today is such a big event worth celebrating. Because it's a, it's, he's joining the party that God's invited us all to. God loves him. He's delighted that he's coming into his family here in Finham and around the world. So if the party is that good, why do you think all the people that the host invited said no? They didn't, weren't going to come. They all had excuses, didn't they? Can you remember any of the excuses that we heard? Go on, John, at the back. I'm going to shout. Yeah, some, somebody got married. So they, they were, there were people doing business, weren't there? Somebody had bought a, yeah, looking after his field. Somebody bought his field and he needed to go and look after it. Now, they're all good reasons for not coming to something, are they? They're, you know, they're all responsible. They're not bad things in themselves, are they? Taking care of business, looking after your land, your property. Lots of us might make a similar choice now, but was it really better than going to an amazing party? Not sure. Especially a party that was going to be so kind of full of food and drinks and dancing and music, hosted by an important person. Feels a bit like they were choosing second best, really, doesn't it? It's a bit like getting an invitation to, for tea at Buckingham Palace and going, you know what? No, I'm washing the car. <laughs> I don't think any of us, well, I don't know think I would do that, certainly. You know, there's lots of things in our lives that we do rather than accept God's invitation. I often hear people say that, oh, they've got way too much to do to spend time with God. You know, we can all fall into that trap, can't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can put things before our relationship with God when actually all the other things should flow from the love and the joy and the celebration that we have with that relationship with God. That's why Jesus wants us to make it a priority. And it's one of the questions, reasons we ask Ronnie's parents and godparents all those questions. Why we ask them to make promises on his behalf. Because it's all about putting God first, God's ways first over everything else. Sin, but also things that the world tells us are important and that might pull us and Ronnie away from God. That's why we ask those questions. So Jesus is reminding us in this story that God has been telling his people about the joy that's there for us in this party, this celebration with him, since the very beginning of time. If we focus on the second best stuff, the stuff the world tells us is important, or if we focus on how busy we are, then Jesus is saying in this story, we're going to miss out. We're going to miss out on the joy and the celebration with God. We're going to miss out on that amazing time we'll have forever. That freedom, that peace, that joy with God in God's kingdom. Now, I don't know about you, I have a severe case of FOMO. Anybody know what FOMO means? Fear of missing out, thank you, yes. I have a serious case of FOMO. I hate to think something might be happening that I'm not involved in that might be good. <laughs> I just want to, yeah, really struggle with that. It's not always seen as a positive thing, is it? But actually, you know what? I think Jesus might quite have liked the invited guests to have a bit of FOMO in this story. I think he might have quite liked to think that they were worried about missing out on that party in God's kingdom. We're going to think a bit more about why we need to take God's invitation seriously in just a few minutes, but I'm going to go back to Matt now. So we've been uh, learning some memory verses over this uh, last month or so. I'm looking at my wife, Sandra. I was hope. Don't worry, I'll sort it out. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, notices, is it? Okay. Okay. So, it's 
So we've been looking at some memory verses. We're going to probably do a, see if you can remember those who have been here, a couple of them maybe, and then we'll go for this week's. So I've got them here, Sandra, so you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, yeah, I've got them all here. Is there anybody here today that's been here in recent weeks that can remember any of our, any of our memory verses so far, or even have a stab at it? No hands going. Do you see that's discouraging? Well, I've put, oh, uh, Margaret. Margaret thinks oh. she knows one. Do you want to have a go at yelling one at me? Thank you. That is definitely oh, one of yes. our memory verses. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Anybody else remember any of the others? What about Dave? Yes, forgive your brother or sister from your heart, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah? Uh, here we go. Oh, it's that one. Forgive your brother yeah. or sister from your heart. Lovely. Okay, there were a few more. Any more? I'm feeling a bit more encouraged now that some have been remembered. Wendy, go. Yes, I think Jesus said, for anyone who has ears, for everyone who has ears to hear, let them hear. Okay, well, let's have a look at what today's memory verse is going to be. There we go. For the grace, that's a bit washed out, isn't it? Can you see that? Oh, it's better on the screen behind. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Sorry, I've just noticed how bald I'm going at the back. Carry on. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. See, that word grace is a beautiful word. It's, it's kind of a word that, that we often, if we explore what grace from God is, it kind of feels almost unfair somehow that, that everybody is somehow deserving of, of God's grace. But it's not that we're deserving. It's all because of what Jesus has done for us that we are now able to accept the gorgeous gifts that God wants to give us. And this verse says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Let's say that all together. Are you ready? For the, the grace, grace of, of God, God has, has appeared, appeared that, that offers salvation, offers salvation to, to all people. people. Titus 2, 2 verse 11. 11. Let's say that once again together. Oh, sorry. Oh, don't, yeah. For the grace yeah. of God, God has, has appeared, appeared that, that offers, offers salvation, salvation to all people. people. Titus 2, verse, verse 11. 11. Right, so now, what would happen if we lost some of the words? Could we remember them? Let's have a go. For, For the, the grace, grace of God, God has, has appeared. That's salvation. Offers salvation to, to all people. people. Titus 2, verse 11. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's see if we can remember. Do you think you can? Let's give it a go. For, For the, the grace, grace of God, God has appeared, appeared that offers salvation to, to all people. people. Titus 2, two verse mm. 11. That was great. That was great. Do you think we could remember? Oh, my goodness. Can we remember these? Let's give it a go. Let's go. For, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to, to all, all people. people. Titus 2, verse 11. 11. And boom. Yes. That, oh, okay. Come on. This is the big test. One, two, three, go. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Titus 2, verse 11. Fantastic. Let's see if anybody can remember that next week. Abby, right. back to you. bit about that grace, what that means now. So Jesus tells us the host gives up on the people that he first invited um, and told his servants to invite anyone that would come, whether they were good or bad, wherever they came from, whatever their situation had been, whether they were young or old, whether they were fit or poorly, even the people that you would least expect to see at a big lavish party. If the invitation had been refused by the people God had initially asked, then he was going to extend that invitation to all the people who were considered outcasts or foreigners or people that didn't normally fit in, as well as anybody else who would say yes. And I wonder, you know, if they were a bit confused when they got there. Why would they have been invited? Why had they been invited to the party instead of all the people that the host would normally hang out with? 
didn't make any sense. I wonder if they worried because they couldn't afford the right clothes or didn't think they would know what to do at a really posh party. Have you ever been to one of those things? You're probably all way more sophisticated than me. But you know when you sit down and you look at the table setting and there's like 15 forks and 20 knives and five glasses and you never know where to start or what to do. You know, I was, you're, 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 none, none of you do. You're all way more sophisticated than me, clearly. But anyway, I wonder if they were worried about it, they wouldn't know what to do. But ultimately, you know, none of that mattered. They decided to accept the host's invitation. They're going to come anyway. And they were given that wonderful food and drink and that amazing hospitality. And that's the exciting thing about God's kingdom. You see, so often Jesus says it belongs to the people who think they deserve it the least. And of course, the reality is, like we were saying earlier in the service, it's why we say sorry in every service we do, because we all, none of us really deserve to be sat at God's party table. Really. He's God after all. All of us get stuff wrong. All of us get a bit broken from time to time. All of us make mistakes, put things before God. But this invitation, this invitation to God's joy and celebration, to the best that he can offer us, is also an invitation to accept grace and forgiveness. Grace that says it doesn't matter if you don't deserve it. I love you and I'm going to invite you anyway. He offers us that grace. And that grace is won because Jesus died on the cross and rose again. Which meant that there was nothing in between us and God. Nothing in the way of us being able to accept God's invitation. Not our sin, not the things we do wrong. Not things that happen in the world. Nothing was going to get between us and God because of the grace Jesus demonstrated on the cross. But we have an important part in that. And that's to accept the invitation. Accept the grace that God offers us. Because if we hear that offer of grace and we don't accept it, it's like there's a big party going on inside a house and we're just pressed up against the window looking in. Looking in the windows, everybody enjoying the joy and the celebration and the great food and the good partying, the freedom that a life with God brings, but actually never actually stepping through the door into it ourselves. That's what happens if we don't accept what Jesus is offering us. It's up to us to make that move and accept that invitation. You know, we've been thinking about mission this year at St. Martin's and sharing our own stories of Jesus' love. And it's been amazing to hear how so many of us have stories to share of God's grace in our own lives. How he's changed us as we accepted his invitation. How he's given us the new clothes to wear. In that culture, again, if guests came and they didn't have the right clothes to wear, they were given new ones to put on so they weren't out of place. Clean, fresh, beautiful clothes. And that's what happens when we accept God's invitation. We're given clean, fresh, beautiful clothes. Clothes of kindness and of gentleness, of patience, of self-control, of healing, and so many other things. Clothes that we might not have had before. And that's why we're celebrating this morning that Ronnie's come into God's family through baptism. Not just this family party here, but the family party worldwide. Because being baptized is just the beginning of that journey. Walking with Jesus, learning how to follow him. To be changed by his love and his grace. To wear the new clothes that Jesus gives Ronnie as he hopefully chooses to make those promises for himself one day. So if we remember nothing else today... Let's remember that this story Jesus told shows us that God has joy and freedom waiting for us. And he's inviting all of us to join that party. It's an invitation to the best party 
you could ever imagine. So what are we going to choose to do? Are we going to refuse the invitation? Are we going to go about our second best business? Or are we going to accept God's invitation and with it the grace and the mercy and the love and the transformation that comes with it? What are you going to be most worried about missing out on? Amen. We're going to sing a song now that I hope will be helpful to you as you're just thinking about what you've heard. And after that, we're going to have some prayers. You can remain seated for this if you want, or you can stand. It's up to you. Remain that attitude of knowing God's stillness with us as soon leads us in a time of prayer.
Let us pray. Loving Father, thank you for today's parable. Thank you that we were all welcome at your fantastic party. Lord, we're sorry for the times when we've made excuses and rejected your invitation. We've put other things first. Help us daily to choose to follow you. Help us to spend time with you and not let the busyness of life get in the way. Thank you that you are never too busy to care about us and we can confidently bring our prayers of thanks and our prayers for our broken world to you this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give, give you thanks for this year's Holiday Club. Thank you for all the children and helpers who came, for the fun, games and crafts they enjoyed, for friendships made and strengthened. May everyone who came really continue to grow in their experience and understanding of your love for them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, as we think of parties and banquets, we think of good things that you give us to eat and enjoy. We give you thanks for all the lovely food we can eat, for the colour and variety. Thank you for those who produce it, transport it and sell it to us. For those who buy it and cook it. Sorry, Lord, when we take this provision for granted. Take a moment to thank God for a particularly tasty meal you've had this week. You might want to tell your neighbour what that was. Hope I don't make you all hungry. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful provision. Amen. Amen. Lord, we pray for those who feel left out and excluded. May they know that your invitation is for them. We pray for single parents struggling emotionally and financially on their own. We pray for elderly people who feel isolated and not valued, perhaps unable to enjoy the freedoms they once had because of ill health or mobility problems. For all struggling with mental ill health and struggling to access help and support. Lord, we pray for all who feel isolated and rejected without the support of loving friends and family. Draw close and give them hope for a brighter future. Amen. Lord, we pray for Afghanistan. As the troops withdraw, we pay, pray for calm in the country. We pray for all grieving those who died in the attacks on the Kabul airport on Thursday and those injured and traumatised. Bring comfort in their distress. We pray for the refugees who have arrived in the UK. May they be warmly welcomed and treated with kindness. Help them make a new start here and mend their broken lives. We pray that the charities which support them, like Carriers of Hope here in Coventry and others around the country, will receive the resources they need quickly. And we pray too for all those who couldn't be evacuated, those who are frightened and remain in Afghanistan. Protect them and give them hope. Amen. Heavenly Father, as the summer holidays come to an end, we pray for all children, young people, teachers and support staff preparing for the new term. We pray for all who are anxious about a change of school or teacher. We pray for those starting school or moving to a different school or college, worrying about making friends or coping with the work. We pray too for teachers starting new jobs or working with different year groups. Support them during this time of change. Thank you, Lord, for the education provision in this country, available to everyone. We pray for children around the world in developing countries unable to access education because of poverty or gender. And we pray for charities working to provide schools, teachers and equipment for children in need. May they use their scarce resources wisely and reach those most in need. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we pray for our homes and all our relationships there. 
We ask that our families and those we love will be surrounded by walls of love, care and understanding. We pray especially for Ronnie's family this morning. Surround them all with your love and protection. Help us always to show thanks to one another, to be slow to anger and quick to forgive. We pray for families and relationships under pressure. Help them to build walls of love and security. Think about members of your own family now. Bring your prayers to God in thanks for them or worries about them. Thank you, Father. Amen. Loving God, we pray for all who are ill in mind, body or spirit, and those grieving. Draw close to them in a special way, bringing comfort and peace. We pray too for all who care for the sick. Grant them your strength and patience. Hold those we know in your loving arms and may they know your peace afresh today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray finally for ourselves. May we know your presence with us in all the ups and downs of the week ahead. Help us to walk closely with you. Guide and strengthen us to live our lives in a way which pleases you. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sue. We end our time of prayer with the words of the prayer which Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a final blessing just before we sing our final song together. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with us wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing a song, a hymn. Uh, amazing Grace now. Uh, if you're, you're new to, you'll know Amazing Grace, but there's a bit in the middle that just may take you slightly off guard, but we're going to sing this together. So let's stand, and we're going to sing this final fantastic hymn of grace.
chains are gone. Finally, the words of the grace, we can say them together, and we suggest that you go out that door because it's the biggest kind of door straight outside. So after we finished, if you want to go out that door, that would be fantastic. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a great week.